Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Saira Mushtaba and with me is Renu Kataria with the Midday News. The headlines. President Draupadi Murmu inaugurates Mysuru Dasara Festival at Chamundi Hills. Also to inaugurate a new campus of the Indian Institute of Information Technology Dharwad. Union Home Minister Amit Shah inaugurates a slew of development projects in Ahmedabad. Says government is stressing on strengthening the health and medical infrastructure in the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to embark on a visit to Japan this evening to attend the funeral of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Tokyo. Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry launches Swachh Toy Kasin, a unique competition to make toys from waste. In charge of Congress in Rajasthan, Ajay Makan to submit his report on political developments of the state to President Sonia Gandhi. National Testing Agency to declare the common university entrance test for its graduate results today. In Italy, right-wing alliance led by Giorgia Meloni set to win a clear majority in the next parliament. Nine-day-long Navratri festival to worship Goddess Durga begins today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi extends greetings to everyone. And now the news in detail. President Draupadi Murmu inaugurated the 10-day Mysuru Dasara festival by offering prayers to Goddess Chamundeshwari atop Chamundi Hills today. Starting her speech in Kannada, the president extended her greetings to the people on the festive occasion. She sought the blessings of Goddess Chamundeshwari for the well-being of the country and her people. Later, speaking in Hindi, the president said that Vijaya Dashmi is the celebration of victory of Goddess Chamundeshwari over demon Mahishasur. Mysuru Dasara ke Sri Ganesh ke pavit avsar par main Karnataka ke sabhi nivasiyon ko aur Mysuru ke sabhi bhai behno ko vishesh shubhkamnaye vyakt karti hu. Mujhe is varsh ke ye mukhya dasara utsav ka udghatan karke bahut prasannata ho rahi hai. Hamari adhyatmik, sanskritik va लोक परंपरा में देवी चामुंडेश्वरी परम पूज्य मानी जाती है एक लोक परंपरा के अनुसार महाशक्ति ने महिषासुर का इसी क्षेत्र में बोध किया था आदिशक्ति का यह स्थान आध्यात्मिक ऊर्जा के स्रोत के रूप में माना जाता है द प्रेस नोटिस दैट द फेस्टिवल आल्सो सेलिब्रेट्स वुमन पावर शी रिकॉल्ड द रोल प्लेड बाय रानी अब्बका देवी एंड रानी चेन्नम्मा इन फाइटिंग फॉरेन कॉलोनियल पावर्स and Onaki Obawa of Chitradurg who countered the soldiers of Hyder Ali. The president said that since time immemorial, the saints have united the society through festivals and classics like Ramayana and Mahabharat have guided the people on the right path. हमारे देश के ऋषि मुनियों ने तथा सामान्य जनता ने भी सदियों से भारतीय समाज को उत्सवों के माध्यम से जोड़ रखे हैं रामायण महाभारत पुराण इतिहास और लोक कथाओं के देवी और मानवीय चरित्रों पर आधारित पर्व पूरे देश में मनाया जाते हैं इस पर्व में विविधता के साथ साथ एक रूपता भी दिखाई देती है मैसूरू दशहरा भारतीय संस्कृति के गौरव का पर्व भी है In his address on the occasion, Chief Minister of Karnataka Basavaraj Bombay said that after a gap of two years, the Dasara festival is being celebrated at a grand scale this year post the pandemic. He thanked the president for accepting his invitation to inaugurate the Dasara festival, the first president to do the honors ever. Governor Thavarchand Gehloth, Union Ministers Prahlad Joshi and Shobha Karandaje were among those present on the occasion. After the inauguration of the festival, the president left for Hubali, where she received a civic honor by Hubali and Dharwad Municipal Corporation. Later today, Ms. Murmu will inaugurate a new campus of the Indian Institute of Information Technology in Dharwad. Tomorrow, the president will inaugurate the Integrated Cryogenic Engines Manufacturing Facility of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited (HAL) in Bengaluru. Cryogenic engines are used by ISRO in its satellite launch operations. At the HAL, the president will also lay the foundation stone of the South Zonal Institute of Virology virtually. The president will also inaugurate Saint Joseph's University and in the evening attend a civic reception hosted by the state government in her honor. On Wednesday, the president will return to Delhi. 
Union Home Minister Amit Shah says under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi the government is stressing on strengthening the health and medical infrastructure in the country the number of medical colleges in the country has been increased from 387 in 2013-14 to 596 in 2022 addressing a gathering after laying the foundation stone of the 350 bed ESIC hospital in Sanand Ahmedabad Mr Shah said the hospital will benefit more than 1.30 lakh workers in the Sanand industrial locality अभी शुरू में तो साढ़े तीन बेड का अस्पताल बनेगा इसके लिए 500 करोड़ रुपया लगेगा परंतु दूरदर्शिता के साथ श्रम विभाग ने इसकी नींव और इसका स्ट्रक्चर जो बन रहा है इसके अंदर पूरी व्यवस्था करी है कि जरूरत पड़ने पर इस अस्पताल को साढ़े तीन से 500 बेड का अस्पताल हम तुरंत ही बना सकते हैं आवर कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट फाइल्स दिस रिपोर्ट Prime Minister Narendra Modi will embark on a visit to Japan this evening to attend the funeral of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Tokyo. The ceremony will be held at the Nippon Budokan Arena in Tokyo. Shinzo Abe passed away on 8th July this year after he was shot at during a campaign. Our correspondent has filed this report. Shinzo Abe, who was Japan's longest serving prime minister, shared a deep friendship with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Shinzo Abe's contribution to India-Japan relations was richly recognized by the conferment upon him of the prestigious Padma Vibhushan in 2021. Over 700 guests from more than 200 countries, including Prime Minister Modi, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, US Vice President Kamala Harris, and South Korean Prime Minister Han Duk-soo will attend the funeral. With Anand Kumar Suparna Sekya, AIR News, Delhi. During the visit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will also meet his Japanese counterpart, Fumio Kishida. Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry launched Swachh Toy Kusan today. It is a unique competition to make toys from waste. Speaking on the occasion, Housing and Urban Affairs Secretary Manoj Joshi said, soft toys which are non-durable are often seen in garbage landfills. He said that earlier toys were made of wood and used to last for a longer period. The secretary said that used toys should be collected, redeveloped and resold. He said this should turn into a social movement as it is a step towards environment friendly toys. The Swachh Toy Kusan was launched under the Swachh Bharat Mission Urban Initiative. The competition is open to individuals and groups to bring forth innovation in toy designs using dry waste. It focuses on efficient designs that can be replicated at a larger scale. The competition is being hosted on MyGov's Innovate India portal. Center for Creative Learning IIT Gandhinagar is the knowledge partner for the initiative. Rajasthan Congress in charge Ajay Makan has said the meeting of party MLAs held yesterday at the residence of Urban Development Minister Shanti Dhariwal is prime affaire in discipline. Talking to reporters in Jaipur this morning, Mr. Makan said it is not clear yet as to how many MLAs have resigned and whether or not they have resigned. Mr. Makan said his party colleague Malikarjun Kharge and he wanted to meet each of the MLAs one on one to know their views, but this could not happen. He said three ministers Shanti Dhariwal, Mahesh Joshi, and Pratap Singh Khacharyawas came to meet them as representatives of the MLAs. शांति धारीवाल जी डॉक्टर जोशी और प्रताप काचरियावास ये तीनों विधायक उनके नुमाइंदे के तौर के ऊपर हमारे पास में आए और उन्होंने तीन शर्तें रखी सबसे पहले तो उन्होंने कहा कि बेशक आप अगर रेजोल्यूशन पास करना है कांग्रेस अध्यक्ष के ऊपर छोड़ने का तो बेशक रेजोल्यूशन पास करें लेकिन उसके अंदर फैसला उसका उन्नीस अक्टूबर के बाद में होना चाहिए दूसरा हम लोग जब कहा कि हम सबसे अलग अलग एक एक करके बात करेंगे तो उन्होंने कहा नहीं हम ग्रुप्स में आएंगे तीसरा जो उन्होंने बोला कि एक जो विधायक उस वक्त लॉयल थे अशोक जी के साथ में थे उनमें से ही कोई बनाया जाना चाहिए सचिन पायलट या उसके ग्रुप में से नहीं बनाया जाना चाहिए मिस्टर मार्कल इज फ्लाइंग बैक टू डेली दिस आफ्टरनून एंड वुड सबमिट हिज रिपोर्ट टू कांग्रेस प्रेसिडेंट सोनिया गांधी The National Testing Agency will declare the results of the Common University Entrance Test Postgraduate CUET PG this afternoon. In a tweet, UGC Chairman Professor M Jagdish Kumar said the results will be announced by 4 p.m. The UGC has instructed universities to create a student-friendly portal for admission through CUET PG score. 
Candidates who appeared in the CUETPG examination will be able to check and download their scorecards from the official website cuet.nta.nic.in or nta.ac.in. The CUET PG examination was conducted for admission in PG programs of central universities. As many as 66 universities conducted the entrance test for admissions for the academic session 2022-23. India's export of pharmaceutical products has increased by 146% between April and August of the current financial year over the same period in 2013-14. In a tweet, Minister for Chemicals and Fertilizers, Dr. Mansuk Manviya said, the export of pharma products grew to around 64,320 crore rupees in April to August this financial year, whereas the figure stood at around 26,184 crore rupees in corresponding period of 2013-14. The minister said India's pharmaceutical industries are fulfilling the vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat adding that Made in India medicines are saving precious lives globally. He further stated that the Prime Minister has rightly said that the pharma industry is not only an asset for India, but for the entire world. Over 217 crore 68 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been administered under the nationwide vaccination drive so far. In the last 24 hours, more than 11,67,000 doses were administered, while around 5,000 people recovered. Currently, the recovery rate stands at 98.72%. The total number of recoveries has reached over 4 crore 40 lakh. Over 4,000 new cases were recorded and more than 1,64,000 tests were conducted in the last 24 hours. India's active caseload currently stands at over 43,000. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. President Draupadi Murmu inaugurates Mysuru Dasra Festival at Chamundi Hills, also to inaugurate a new campus of the Indian Institute of Information Technology, Dharwad. Union Home Minister Amit Shah inaugurates a slew of development projects in Ahmedabad, says government is stressing on strengthening the health and medical infrastructure in the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to embark on a visit to Japan this evening to attend the funeral of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Tokyo. Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry launches Swatch Toykathon, a unique competition to make toys from waste. In charge of Congress in Rajasthan, Ajay Makun to submit his report on political developments of the state to President Sonia Gandhi. National Testing Agency to declare the Common University Entrance Test postgraduate results today. In Italy, right-wing alliance led by Giorgia Meloni set to win a clear majority in the next parliament. Nine-day-long Navratri festival to worship Goddess Durga begins today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi extends greetings to everyone. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. प्रतियोगी परीक्षाओं की तैयारी करने वालों के लिए इस बार अभ्यास कार्यक्रम में विषय होगा पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इस सब्जेक्ट पर अपने सवाल आप हमें व्हाट्सएप करें 9289094044 पर या फिर आप ईमेल करें अभ्यास डॉट ए आई आर न्यूज एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम आरोप सवाल भेजने की अंतिम तारीख है अट्ठाईस सितम्बर आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास और हमारे विशाल देश पर राज करने का स्वप्न देख रहे हैं हम इनके स्वप्न को चटना चूर कर देंगे निकल पड़े स्वाधीनता के भाले स्वतंत्रता संग्राम की सुनी अनसुनी कहानियों के साथ स्वराज हर रविवार रात नौ बजे डी नेशनल पर Welcome back. You're listening to Midday News. INS Sunena entered Port Victoria Seychelles on the 24th of this month to participate in the annual training exercise Operation Southern Readiness of Combined Maritime Forces. This marks the maiden participation of an Indian naval ship in Combined Maritime Forces exercise. The joint training exercise is being attended by representative delegations from India, the U.S., Italy, Australia, Canada, New Zealand and ship participation from the UK and Spain. 
A special flight carrying 55 Afghan Sikh minorities fleeing Afghanistan arrived at the Delhi airport yesterday as part of Government of India's efforts to evacuate distressed minorities from the Taliban-led nation. Upon arrival, the Sikh refugees thanked the Indian government, which gave them urgent visas and helped them reach Delhi. Navratri, the nine-day-long festival to worship Goddess Durga, begins today with religious fervor and gaiety. During Navratri, the nine forms of Goddess Durga are worshipped. On the first day, Devi Durga is worshipped as Shell Putri. In Jammu and Kashmir, the Mata Vaishno Devi Shrine atop the Trikuta Hills in Riyasi district of Jammu Division is all decked up to welcome pilgrims arriving for the nine-day Navratri festival. <laughs> Over 3 lakh pilgrims from across the country and abroad are expected to visit the shrine during the festival. In view of this, the Sri Mata Vaishno Devi Shrine Board is putting in place all necessary arrangements, including security, to meet the heavy rush. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha has extended his warm greetings to the people of the Union Territory on Navratri Festival. In a message, he said the nine-day festivities remind of the eternal message of victory of good over evil and mark the hope of a bright future. He prayed that the Navratri festival brings peace, happiness and prosperity for all and Ma Durga blesses everyone with strength, courage and determination. In Gujarat, Shardia Navratri, the biggest festival of the state, begins today with great joy and fervor. A report from our correspondent. From keeping fast performing Havan's puja to decking up in traditional attires like Chaniya Choi and Kediu and swinging to the beats of Garba and Dandiya, Navratri is celebrated with a great enthusiasm by Gujaratis across the world. The Garbo, which is an earthen pot with holes, is lit and worshipped for nine days during the festival. Cities of Gujarat are already adorned into a festive look. Every nookar, society, shop, social club, party plot are decorated and illuminated with colorful lights. After the gap of almost three years, the party plots of the state are geared up to host the grand Navratri celebrations. Local markets are flooded with variety of colorful, attractive traditional dresses, oxidized jewelry and dandiya sticks. This year, following the state government's permission, cities will reverberate with the sound of music and dance till midnight. Chief Minister Bupendra Patel will kick off the vibrant Navratri festival in Ahmedabad today. Aparna Kun, AR News, Ahmedabad. Namaste, namaste, namaste. In Uttar Pradesh, the first day of Navratri is being celebrated with traditional fervor. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath greeted people and also gave instructions to the police and administrative officials to keep a strict vigil during the festive season. On the first day of Navratri, devotees are reaching in large numbers at famous Shakti Peets of a state like Vindhyachal and Devi Patan temples to worship the goddess of power. From tonight, the Shardi and Varatra Mela at Vindhyachal Dham has also begun. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath yesterday reviewed the law and order situation of the state and asked the officials to increase police patrolling in view of the coming festive season. He said that Durga Puja functions should be organized in public parks so that there will be no increase convenience to the traffic. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has extended Navratri greetings to everyone. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said, May this auspicious occasion of faith and belief infuse new energy and enthusiasm in everyone's life. In Italy, a right-wing alliance led by Giorgia Meloni looks set to win with a clear majority in the next parliament. According to media reports, exit polls showed the alliance led by Ms. Meloni's Brothers of Italy party had secured around 45% of the votes. The party had 26% of the votes, emerging as the strongest single group in the polls. The centre-left alliance led by the Democratic Party was the second strongest bloc with 29% of the votes. Speaking earlier today, Giorgia Meloni said that Italians had sent a clear message in backing her alliance. Her remarks came shortly after the main centre-left group, the Democratic Party, conceded defeat. Media reports say Ms. Meloni is widely expected to form Italy's most right-wing government since the Second World War. 
Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for crowds of people across the country. All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series, Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saad. It showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. In today's episode, we will bring you the story of Vocal for Local campaign, which aims to build a self-reliant India. From an increased focus on Indian firms for public procurement to offering tax incentives to foreign and Indian companies for local manufacturing, the government has raised its Vocal for Local pitch. Vocal for Local has become the latest trending slogan which has emerged during the COVID-19 pandemic. The idea behind this movement finds its root in the Swadeshi movement which was promoted by Mahatma Gandhi and popularized in 1905 during the Indian independence struggle. It was seen as a way to imbibe the feeling of nationalism and nationalistic pride among Indians. The aim of the Vocal for Local campaign is to promote local industries and consume local wherever possible so that the long-term effects of an increase in demand can be used to develop the domestic industries and make them gradually self-reliant. Economic analyst Puneet Jain says the pitch of Vocal for Local will help in the upscaling of production and eventually make India a manufacturing center for the world, thereby aiding the country's aim to become a $5 trillion economy by 2025. So government's campaign to boost manufacturing in India through its campaign Vocal for Local has actually many benefits. It generates a lot of employment within the country and of course it helps us to manage our import and uh, reduce our dependence on other economies. We need to uh, develop local industries the small and medium enterprises which employ a lot of people. They depend on local manufacturing, on local companies which sell goods and services within India. The main target, of course, is employment. It also helps to generate revenues within India, which will help us in managing the macroeconomic situation. If we have very strong domestic manufacturing base, then we are also able to export those uh, goods and services to the other parts of the world to become a $5 trillion economy in two to three years. Vocal for Local gives unequivocal importance to the domestic industries and the small-scale shops and stores. This movement can also be seen as an impetus to boost demand and hence to throw a lifeline to the small and marginal domestic industries which are struggling to survive in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. If demand shifts in favor of domestic companies, then the advantage is threefold. First, it will reduce dependence on foreign products and cut down on the import pressure. Second, it will give a fighting chance to domestic companies to survive through the crisis period. Third, it will place India in a strategic position to emerge as the new manufacturing center of the world. Also, the slogan, Vocal for Local, does not only mean that the products should be made in India, but the promotion of those products should take place so as to make those products competitive. During his Independence Day address in 2020, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, mindset of free India should be Vocal for Local. He raised a clarion call to the citizens of Vocal for Local, one of the most potent slogans the country has heard in the last 50 years. हम अपने लघु उद्योगों को सशक्त करेंगे हम सब लोकल के लिए वोकल बनेंगे और हम ज्यादा इनोवेट करेंगे एम्पावर करेंगे अपने युवाओं को महिलाओं को आदिवासियों दिव्यांगों को दलितों को गरीबों को गांव को पिछड़ों को हर किसी को आज भारत ने असाधारण गति से और संभव को संभव किया है इसी इच्छा शक्ति इसी लगन इसी जज्बे के साथ प्रत्येक भारतीय को आगे बढ़ना है इक्कीसवीं सदी का ये तीसरा दशक हमारे सपनों को पूरा करने का दशक होना चाहिए एन एक्सटेंशन ऑफ दिस स्लोगन इज Local for global, that local products in India should have global appeal and reach. Come, let's make Vocal for Local a Jeevan Mantra and take our country to unprecedented heights during this Amrit Kaal. Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saath can be accessed on Twitter at AIR News Alerts, News on AIR official YouTube channel, News on AIR app, Facebook and Instagram handles. So tune in to All India Radio News for Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saaz.
मोबाइल पे आजादी क्वेस्ट आया आजादी का इतिहास डाउनलोड कर रहे आजादी क्वेस्ट ये लो जी तो ढेरो इनाम मौका पाए जुड़ने का रेडियो और टीवी के साथ सिर्फ खेल नहीं उत्सव है आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव है आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव है डाउनलोड करें आजादी क्वेस्ट ऐप और पाए ढेरो इनाम Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed deep grief at the loss of lives in a road accident in Himachal Pradesh. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said that all possible assistance is being provided to the injured and wished for their speedy recovery. Seven people were killed and ten others injured after a tourist vehicle rolled down from a cliff in the Ghiyagi area of Banja Valley in Kullu district. The accident took place around 8:30 p.m. last night on NH305. President Draupadi Murmu has expressed sadness at the death of many persons including students in a road accident in Kullu district of Himachal Pradesh. In a tweet she offered her condolences to the families of the deceased and wished a speedy recovery to those injured. In another an tragic incident in Himachal Pradesh, five persons of a family were killed and one injured in a landslide in Sirmor district last night. Four of the dead were children. According to the DSP of Ponta Sahib Veer Bahadur Singh the family members were sleeping when their house was hit by a landslide at Khichwadi of Ras Panchayat near Ronhat of Shilai subdivision as soon as information was received local police people and police reached the spot and started relief and rescue work In Telangana Basukamma the state floral festival has begun with women in large numbers participating in the festivities across the state Yesterday marked the beginning of the 9 day official festival of the state. Governor Tamil Sai Sondarajan celebrated Basukamma with women from different walks of life at Raj Bhavan last evening. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for the day. National capital Delhi is expected to have a partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature recorded was 24 degrees Celsius and maximum will be around 32 degrees Celsius. Mumbai is likely to experience rain or thunder showers during the afternoon or evening. The minimum temperature was 25 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be around 33 degrees. Chennai is expected to have thunderstorm with rain. The minimum temperature was 26 degrees Celsius, and maximum will be 35 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have a partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. The temperature will hover between 27 and 33 degrees Celsius. Srinagar will have a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards the afternoon or evening. The minimum temperature was 15 degrees Celsius and maximum will be around 26 degrees. Jammu is expected to have a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards the afternoon or evening. The minimum temperature was 20 degrees Celsius and maximum will be around 32 degrees. Leh is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm. The minimum temperature was 4 degrees Celsius and maximum will be around 17 degrees. Gilgit will have a generally cloudy sky. The temperature will hover between 14 and 29 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad is likely to have a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards the afternoon or evening. The temperature will hover between 16 and 34 degrees Celsius. In the south Hyderabad will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain Bengaluru will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain Visakhapatnam will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers In the northeast Guwahati Imphal Kohima Aswal and Itanagar Shillong Agartala and Gangtok will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers The temperature in this region will vary between 16 and 32 degrees Celsius And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again President Draupadi Murmu inaugurates Mysuru Dasara festival at Chamundi Hills also to inaugurate a new campus of the Indian Institute of Information Technology Dharwad Union Home Minister Amit Shah inaugurates a slew of development projects in Ahmedabad says government is stressing on strengthening the health and medical infrastructure in the country Prime Minister Modi to embark on a visit to Japan this evening to attend the funeral of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Tokyo Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry launches Swachh Toy Kasan, a unique competition to make toys from waste. In charge of Congress in Rajasthan, Ajay Makan to submit his report on political developments of the state to President Sonia Gandhi. National Testing Agency to declare the Common University Entrance Test for graduate results today. In Italy, right-wing alliance led by Giorgia Meloni set to win a clear majority in the next parliament. 
and nine day long navratri festival to worship goddess durga begins today prime minister narendra modi extends greetings to everyone for details of these stories and more log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and newsonair app and with that we end the midday news